Hey folks, welcome back in today's episode of Budgetography. We've got Sir Clicks a Lot out and I want to show you doing some off-camera flash portraits with Steph today with the Manhattan skyline as our background and a noisy boat whizzing past. How you can cheat your camera's sync speed and actually take photos using sync speeds say at 320th, 400th, 500th of a second, still using basic flashes that don't offer high-speed sync. Let's check it out. Okay, folks, before we get into this, jump on over to the website and check out the guide that Steph and I put out at the end of last year, the Express Guide to Off-Camera Flash. We go through all of this in much more detail and loads, loads more. So first things first, when we're talking about our sync speed, it's, um, it's an actual physical thing that's built into your camera. It's not just something that manufacturers make up to try and segment the cameras, although you know that may be part of it. It's actually what, so when you say that your camera's maximum flash sync speed is for example, one 250th of a second. What that means is when you take an exposure, you're, you focus, you meter and everything with the mirror down when you're talking about a DSLR, then the mirror flaps up out of the way, then you've got a curtain that opens and that's what starts the exposure. Then at the end of your exposure time, the second curtain starts to close and everything resets ready to go again. So if your maximum sync speed is one 250th of a second, that's the, the shortest amount of time that it can have the first curtain fully open before the second one needs to be closing because of how fast they travel. So that means that if we go beyond that and we're using a standard flash, this is budgetography after all, that doesn't have high speed sync, if you go beyond the maximum sync speed, that first curtain is still going to be slightly blocking the frame. So let me just show you an example. Here I'm using so clicks a lot Mark II, the D200. This is an old camera, but it actually has a really good sync speed of 1 250th of a second. A lot of modern cameras are still 1 180th or 1 200th. So if we start out here at say 1 1 25th of a second, I'm at f4.5 on my variable aperture 18 to 55, and I've got my evoking flash here on half power. So let's just get a shot here. Okay, so you can see we're getting the obvious shadow from the flash, but the flash is lighting the entire frame. Just for reference, let me take one without the flash so you can see what the frame looks like. So it's not perfect darkness, but she's pretty much disappeared. So if I have a maximum sync speed of 1 250th, I can go up to let's say 1 200th and be confident that it's still going to do its job and it is there, 1 250th. And still, we're getting full exposure. Now what happens if I go past that to 1 3 20th of a second? Give me a little rabbit ears. There we go. Oh, rabbit So, you, <laughs> that one, I, I meant the hand rabbit ears. Um, take a look there. There's a shadow coming across the top of the frame, catching the top of her head. That is the curtain still partly covering the sensor when the flash goes off. So the flash isn't able to hit the whole scene. If we push it further and further, here at 1 400th, you see it's really closing in on her. At a 500th, your face is probably gonna be, put your hands a little lower. because oh, lower, it's, here? Yeah, just a <laughs> guess. Yeah, that worked. Uh, her face is gone, and as we go up and up, let's go up to 1 800th here. Perfect. We're just kind of getting her hands there. So, in most situations, that's game over because you, know, you want your flash to apply evenly to the whole scene. But what if we're framing our subject up so the only part of the shot that needs the flash is in that band that's still getting the flash? So for example, if we go back to our 1 3 20th, give them your cutest Japanese kinky dance. There you go. So with that orientation, it doesn't really work because it's chopping off her head. But I know it's the top of my sensor that's being blocked. So what if I turn it portrait oriented and put that part over to one side? Now, it's still not getting the light, but it's not messing up steps. So we'd be able to salvage a shot from there. And this is more apparent outside where instead of getting that area you know, with no light because the flash is supplying basically all the light in the shot, 
it'll still be getting daylight, so we won't even notice it. So let's go back out in front of the Manhattan skyline and do it again and show you how we can beat that sink speed. Okay, so now back outdoors. Now we really need to think about having two different separate zones of light. So the whole scene, including step, is being lit by the sun, which is somewhere up over there in a really diffuse cloud-covered day. And the flash is just getting her, even by the pole it's dropping off, and by the time we get anywhere near the water, it's not having any impact at all. So the settings I've chosen, I want to underexpose the background. So let's take a look here at F8, 1 200th of a second, and ISO 100. Getting a full shot here. You can see it's quite dark. Now, once I put the flash in again, this isn't the final shot. I just want to show you the wide shot so you get an idea of it. The flash is at full power here. And you can see that's bringing her up. So now she's lifted up off the background. So let's go in there. I'm currently at 200th of a second and see what kind of a shot we can get here where we've got a nice expansive sky, a little bit of skyline in the background, and then we're lifting her off that background. Now, that's working, but I can even stop it down one more stop to F11. Just bring the flash in slightly closer to her. Yep. Okay, so there she's clearly being lifted off the background. Now this is the problem that we're hitting inside. If I want to increase my shutter speed, I can do that. And going up that one little bit to 1 250th of a second is only going to darken down the background. It's not going to impact my flash lit area. So there, we get the background that much darker again, and she's still nicely lit. But as soon as I go past my sync speed, we're going to get that same bar cutting through her head because the flash is only lighting her, but now that we've gone past the sync speed, it's only lighting the bottom part of her. So here's the hack. If we just rearrange the shot so that bar isn't actually over her, there's no problem. So two ways we can do it. If we just widen out our frame, let's actually pull that back a little bit. If we put more of a gap above her head, then there, the flash isn't working in the top of the frame, but it doesn't matter because the flash wasn't hitting there anyway. Likewise, knowing that it's taking the top part of the frame, if I take a portrait orientation and put a big gap on that side, there again, the flash isn't entering that part of the shot, but it doesn't matter because the flash wasn't going there anyway. Let's see how far we can push it. If we go up to 1 400th, maybe just starting to get onto her there, the shadow, uh, and here at 1 500th, you silly Billy. <laughs> there we go, it is starting to be ineffective there altogether. But there, that allows us to at least get half a stop or close to two thirds of a stop before it's really impacting us. And if we're really getting a big expansive shot here, let's just um, pull this diffuser off so we get lots more juice from the flash. Oh, my budgetography lens is not doing too well it's just lost aperture let's just do the old technical adjustment there we go back to f8 make sure that's pointing right at you give him some direction turn a little bit more so, yeah right there okay so now we should have plenty of room to play i'm at one two hundredth of a second f11 And we're actually almost blowing her out there. So I'm going to do a little bit more on my aperture. F14 and 1 250th of a second. And there we go. We're really lifting her up the, off the background there. And there, with the big wide shot, because I've got the flash further back because it's bare, going up to 1 500th of a second with a huge sky. Or if I do it in this orientation, in both instances, the flash is still able to actually get to her, and it doesn't matter that it's not covering the entire frame. All right, before we move the camera away, let's have a little bit of fun. I want to have you jump as high as you can. I'll get down low so we Into can get water. you. the water? Your job is to stand here and not let her fall in the water. She can't swim. I oh, can't no. swim. <laughs> you can't ride a bike. Don't get Yeah, cocky. I don't know There's how to ride a bike. Other. So this will light you whilst you're in the air. Now we're forgetting the Manhattan skyline. I just want to have you and the clouds. So I'll basically lay on the ground and get you with just the clouds in the background. 
So basically look back towards the station. Justin, trust you, catch me. <laughs> if you fall, I will catch you. Justin, no CPR. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Now, there's a high chance someone's gonna get hurt and for a chance, it's probably not gonna be me. Okay. Unless I like jump that way. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so let's focus there. Okay, let's see it. Three, two, one. Boom. First shot, nailed it. Woo! Okay, so a little impromptu jump session there, but the lesson itself, pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. You can go past your sink speed as long as you know where that bar is going to appear of the curtain that isn't allowing full access of your flash to the sensor, and you put it somewhere that you didn't want flash anyway. If it's indoors and flash is lighting everything, you're still going to see that bar. If you're outdoors and the background is being hit by an even light anyway, you're just trying to light up something in the foreground, then it doesn't matter at all and you can work around it. Do me two favors, please do go out and check Steph's channel, Art School Dropouts. Link is in the caption below. They put out some crazy martial arts and kind of mixed drama content as well, right? Just we like... have a lot of stuff. Just check it out. Yeah. You can yeah. figure it out yourself. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> and secondly, let us know as a comment what you'd like to see in a future budgetography video. I'm really keen to do more and more of these. I've just been traveling so much lately. We're kind of a bit behind, but let me know. And I'm going to be seeing Steph for the, once a week for the next couple of weeks. We'll try and get some more content out to you guys. Thanks. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. Ow. Bye! <laughs>